The spirit of this project is inspired by creativity, not politics. Because of the enormity of emotion that has been triggered since October 7, I feel particularly vulnerable to be standing or sitting in front of you today talking about my religion and my profession in an open forum. However, I feel that it is really important to always make space for the reflection of good and evil and to value every human life equally. Born in 1972, 27 years after the end of the Second World War, I assume the role of a witness to many witnesses. My name is Stephen Jolson. I'm a third generation survivor, the grandchild of refugees who came to Melbourne in 1947 and became part of the largest community per capita of Holocaust survivors in the world outside of Israel. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today and recognise that the history of a city is inseparably linked to the people who live within it. It is a locus of our collective memory. I revere the opportunity to design the memorial room inside the Melbourne Holocaust Museum by Kirsten Thompson Architects. This small project is designed to propagate collective memory of Melbourne's Holocaust community within a broader community fabric. Holocaust memorials, museums and monuments juggle vast disciplines of psychology and architecture. They juxtapose, narrate and remember events according to the tastes of their curators. Commemoration is personal and this project embodies my deep connection to my heritage and my city. The brief for this small project was for visitors to remember the places, remember the camps, remember the victims, light a candle, sit, write a message. Although the room is small, it is charged with an enormous legacy, the story of the refugee embedded in Melbourne's rich diversity. Punctured with windows from the existing facade of the original heritage listed building, it had a 13 metre high rectangular atrium in the corner designed by KTA to bring natural light in, which could be described as a contemporary glass brick chimney. But if you're willing to take the responsibility to remember, to focus your attention and reflect, you might not realise that we have deliberately blocked the windows from the inside out. Nor would you notice the airlock we design as a moment to take to pause before you enter. Like the Holocaust, the experience becomes a separate, isolated event. During the war, presentation from the outside did not always translate to the experience on the inside. A bunk did not necessarily mean sleep. Work did not set you free. And taking a shower had nothing to do with hygiene. Victimisation leads to alienation. The room is ostracised from its context and admonishes our capacity to look away from the crises that occur. It also celebrates how collective memory has strength to bind our resilience together. Our design is a narrative on symbolism and how time and perspective may influence interpretation. The Star of David is, recognized, is a recognised symbol of modern Jewish existence and Judaism, a representation of our religion and identity. From 1933 to 1938, Jews were labelled and ostracised, and the star became an emblem of victimisation and discrimination. Emblems of brokenness are recalled throughout history. The Holocaust began with a night of broken glass. From 1938, the star also became a symbol of fragmentation as Jewish heritage fragmented across Europe. Lined in steel like the rails of their transports, we too engaged in a selection process of sorts by dividing the floor in two like the fate of those who arrived at the camps. To the left are the names of the places the victims and survivors lived before the war and were forced to travel and to the right are the names of the camps where the survivors laboured and the victims are murdered. The floor becomes a compendium of unintended pathways etched in perpetuity, like the ink in their forearms. The six major death camps intersect cities and places like a bar graph tracking the quantum of loss, with the name of each major camp at the end of the line. The seventh track that heads towards the dreaded east carries a secret, a sacred Hebrew prayer for the dead as it rises towards the light. The story of our diaspora is depicted by the images of the people who are witness to the event. Our heritage packed into their suitcases or carried on their backs. These are the faces of our grandparents, our mothers or fathers, husbands or wives, sisters or brothers, sons or daughters who were murdered. Made from blackened steel, we have designed a series of polarizing silhouettes whose body language resonate emotional and physical burden of, the, of their experience without words. With the Star of David removed, it allows the emptiness to resonate. 
as we reflect into the void of the mirror-like surface, the faces of our community, our children's and theirs, perhaps in recognition that if not for time, it could have been us. There are seven silhouettes or shields of armour placed around the room. The seventh embraces the story of migration and assimilation like so many Melbourne refugees, inspired by images of my grandparents in 1947, subtly depicting the hopeful migrant story of starting new lives in Australia safe from atrocity. Using seven digital candles, we channel light to fill the emptiness of each fractured family story and use the flame to illuminate the rituals that the Holocaust denied. A single gold star can be dedicated by family members to commemorate the individual survivor who settled in Melbourne after the war. A single bronze star can also be dedicated by family members to commemorate individuals or entire families who were murdered. Destruction starts with the destruction of identity. The plaques are the heart of the memorial room and have been grafted onto the surfaces of the surrounding walls to create an abstract representation of Melbourne's Holocaust community. Randomly placed and somewhat fragmented, thousands of grey-scaled aluminium stars whose lights no longer shine stand hand in hand like sheep to the slaughter with the ghosts of our ancestors precariously pinned with their backs to the walls. The sea of stars become the apparitions, figments, outlines of those who do not survive the hellfire. Together with the flame, breathe colour and hope into memorialisation, wavering with the kinetic movement propelled by the community that bears witness. Across the threshold of left and right, we've placed a bench seat, an inverted stone triangle that pivots on the finest line between life and death. Lower and height than usual is a symbolic enactment of remorse and sadness, or homage to those who are not able to sit shiver the week-long mourning period in the Jewish religion. In the nook or burrow or hiding place, we have cut a fine vertical slot that diffuses the perspective to the outside world. It enables you to peer through the frames of the old bay window, like my great-grandparents did when they took their son away or simply a place to disconnect in front of the cursive altar and write a message in the memorial book that rests on top. Its design reinforcing a simple message in Hebrew letters, Zachor, or Remember. We cut the Star of David into a quadrant and like the survivors who fled Europe after the war, have placed it in the furthest corner of the world or room to redefine the shape of the existing atrium. Visitors can pick up a piece of Melbourne's bluestone and place it on the floor in the corner. Piled like the shoes of our ancestors, or stones that we leave on a gravesite to show that we have visited, it will become an abstract symbol of Melbourne's community, Melbourne's, of our community's collective memory. The new walls of the atrium follow the lines of the dissected star to reinforce the deep void that pierces through the building mass above. We can suspend ourselves in the reflection, which you might perceive as a deep wound that can never heal. But as we look up towards the sky, we are liberated within a transitional space that celebrates lightness that emerges from the darkness, a search for truth directed towards the heavens, framing a new beginning. By lining the perpendicular walls of the atrium with a mirror-like surface, our community will reflect on a reconstructed symbol of hope and are reminded of the restored wholeness of a culture that not only defied extermination, but also went on to build a nation. We will come to this room and pay our respect to the victims of the Holocaust and their families who settled in Melbourne whose families emerged from the shadows of darkness and gave birth to a community and will collectively remember, but more importantly, a community will not forget. Thank you.